Wow, let's try that again. Well, good morning, Kaufman County. I don't know about you, but I am glad that it is Tuesday. We are supposed to get some sunshine today, and I am ready for some of that. Kaufman County is so beautiful right now. We're in the middle of all this stuff going on, but man, open your eyes. Take an opportunity to look around at God's creation. I'd love to hear if there's something beautiful going on at your house. Say something about it in your comment section. Yesterday was tough because we know that we had our fourth confirmed case of COVID-19 in Kaufman County. And as the total goes up, it should remind us to be careful, make good choices, and stay isolated when you can. Yesterday was a good day of ministry, and we continue to connect with some of the senior adults in our area, which uh, a lot of those people really need uh, help. Uh, Cindy and Nita are doing a great job of leading our charge in this area, and we all owe them a huge hug whenever that's appropriate again. Now, yesterday, we also launched our first silver sneakers workout on the Kaufman Connect website. Over 40 people tuned in and worked out for the first time yesterday, and I'm loving that. One of the biggest risks from all this sheltering in place business is that we will let our bodies get out of shape and that our older adults will lose flexibility and mobility and balance because they're stuck at home. Now these kind of workouts are so important if you're 65 and over, if you wanna stay independent. And so if you're in this category or know someone who is, encourage them to pop over to the Kaufman Connect website New videos will premiere every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday throughout the crisis, and it's all free. And so encourage people that direction. We are continuing to reduce the contact between staff, and Bo and I are uh, had some trouble yesterday with rough and tumble uh, 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 joy, and we're going to get back to that today. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll premiere at 10 o'clock again. Yesterday was also the premiere of At Home with, you know, yesterday, some family in, F in FBC Coffin. Yesterday was the Mollies. And that was a lot of fun. More of that is coming on Wednesday. And this morning, I want to talk a little bit about finding meaning in the middle of the mess. But before I do that, let's pray. God, we thank you for this morning, and we pray that you would be with us. We thank you for the beauty that is all around us, and we pray that we would be aware of it. It's your way of saying that you're in control and that you're with us today. Help us to see it and to love it and to enjoy it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray all this. Amen. Well, in the midst of all of these dark days, there is also an opportunity for us to find meaning even in the midst of the mess. And today, as we kind of think about what Paul says to us in the book of 2 Corinthians, he once again talks about this idea. And he helps us to see that during dark days, there's an opportunity to redeem our pain by finding ways to help others who are going through the same kind of things that we are. Paul writes and says, all of these suffering of ours are for your benefit. And the more of you who are one to Christ and the more there are to thank him for his great mercy, the more glory God gets. Paul is once again pushing the focus away from his own pain and instead looking to see what God is about. What he sees is that his pain is being used by God to help someone else. There is something worse than hurting. What's worse in life than hurting is hurting for no good reason. And it can be really discouraging. In fact, study after study after study has shown that human beings can handle an enormous amount of pain if they see a purpose in it. When you have pain in your life and I have pain in mine, if we don't see any purpose, it's unbearable. It's awful. When you can see a purpose, a good purpose, then it becomes something different. God's purpose in your pain is often for other people's benefit. Once again, thinking that way helps us to get our eyes off ourselves, and it fights back against discouragement and depression. Sometimes you will suffer for the benefit of other people, and in the moment that you are, there's, you're becoming Christ-like in a way that's different than any others, because, of course, that's what Jesus did. We're looking forward to Easter. It's just 10 days or so away, and we're reminded that Jesus suffered on the cross. He didn't suffer for his benefit or for no reason. He suffered on the cross for our benefit. There was a great reason. His pain was redemptive suffering. Sometimes God will let you go through pain, and it's not for your benefit. I mean, yeah, sure, you can grow from it, and often we do, but when we go through pain for the benefit of others, well, that's something different. Paul says, I keep going. I don't get discouraged because I know it's helping others. What is it in your life that is so painful that you need to be using that pain to help other people? It's my experience that your greatest ministry will come out of your deepest hurt. All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And this is how it often happens. Not everything in life that happens is good, but God can use our pain. He can use our pain to help other people. And when that happens, we feel better about the pain that we are going through or we have gone through. 
the pain we're going through now, I mean, this is just what it is to live on planet Earth. What's happening to us has happened to hundreds of generations across human history before. Pestilence, plague, a virus. It's not, it's not something new. It reminds us that this is not heaven. This is Earth, and everything on Earth is broken. So there is suffering, and there is disease, and there is evil here. It's not always good, but we should fight against it, of course. We should avoid it. We should push back when we can, but we shouldn't be surprised when it happens. There is suffering on earth. You and I don't have much of a choice about suffering, but we do have a choice about whether or not we will waste our suffering or use it. Today, I want you to know that one of the best ways you can fight discouragement in your life is to push back against the pain and then welcome God and what he would do to use your pain to help other people. God can cause your pain, our pain, to be good. More than that, we can claim the promise today that he surely is at work doing this very thing even when we can't see it. Would you join me again in prayer? God, we do love you, and we give you our pain today. The isolation and the frustration and the uncertainty that we feel the real pain that some are feeling in the sickness they're going through or the loss of loved ones that they care about. And God, we know that this evil is real around us, but we don't want to waste the pain that it is causing in our lives. Help us to see that one of the ways we can fight discouragement and depression is to use our pain, really to allow you to use our pain, to push back against the darkness, to use our pain to accomplish something good. And it's in Jesus' name we pray all this. Well, let's talk about what's ahead today. There's a lot of good stuff happening around the church and with the church, even though we're not together. Uh, Bo and I will be back this morning at 10 to continue on Rough and Tumble uh, Joy. We'll take a look at all that together. Uh, at 1 o'clock, we're going to hear from John, John Warden as she continues her study on the Psalms of Ascent. At 2, we have a new worship video. I think you're going to love that thing. And then at 4, it's time for Dine and Dash with Dave. Of, like of all the videos, like... Dave and his eating is getting like the most people checking in on that. It's a lot of fun, and I'm grateful for who he is today. Now, finally, we are in the first stages of trying to put together a virtual choir to sing during Holy Week. And it's a big project. We think we can pull it off. I don't know if we can or not. We're going to find out. But if you would be willing to be a part of this virtual choir, would you message me or any member of our worship team to let them know you're interested? We'll follow up with a description of what's going on. Hey, listen, even if you're not a part of our church family, and you'd like to be a part of a virtual choir, we'd love to have you sing with us, and we'll help you get connected so that you can. Well, today, you get out there and enjoy some sunshine. Uh, make some time to spend out in your backyard or just being, being out there uh, enjoying God's creation. Uh, take the opportunity to text and call some friends and encourage them if you can. Um, I hope all that happens today will remind you that God loves you, and he's willing to use this painful moment to help people around you. Have a great day, guys.